This is Suspenders Unbuttoned Podcast. I'm Sarah. And I'm Julie. Join us for unbuttoned and unedited conversations. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Suspenders Unbuttoned Podcast. My name is Sarah. And I'm Julie. We're excited to welcome Natalie Hall. Welcome. Thank you for having I loved that opening, seeing all the actors. That was fun. And then dancing and actors I've heard about and worked with. It's really cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, we love it too. Actually, it's time for an update, but uh, it's hard to part with that one because it's it's so fun. There's a lot of fun on there. <laughs> a lot of we, lovely people. Yeah, we enjoy everybody's antics, so you know, um, <laughs> it makes it fun. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, Natalie, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, we're excited to get a chance to talk with you about unwrapping. Christmas, yeah. which um, is really a special project, something we've not really seen on this network before. So what can you tell us about it? So it's something that I hadn't really ever seen before. So um, I, I had taken some time off to have my second child. So um, I was sort of wanting to come back into something that was really exciting and fun and different. Um, so I was sort of waiting for the right thing. And then this uh, came into my email and it was with a, with a company that I worked with many times who are lovely, um, Tim Johnson Productions, Fireside in Ottawa. And they're the best. They're the most supportive of me being a mom. So I love working with them. And um, the crew out there has become really like a second home and family mm -hmm. to me. Um, but this came across my email and uh, I saw that it was four leading ladies and each had their own story. And I thought it would be so fun to go back to work with a bunch of leading ladies and leading men and get to be with them and work with them. And that's just, that's what's so unique about this project is that, you know, you have four leading ladies in movies, which is so rare to see. It's usually one leading lady, one leading man falling in love. And this is a bunch of love stories and they're all so different and unique and fun and the cast is great. And I love that they had a gift wrapping shop. I think that's so fun and so cute. And they all have different jobs in it. And so I, so long story short, I couldn't pass it up. <laughs> the, um, so the movies, are you in all four movies then? So yeah. all four leading ladies go through all four movies. Yeah. So we each have our own specific love story, right. um, but we, we intertwine, like we get to be side characters in each other's story, which I also loved that. I was like, Oh, I get to be someone sort of like, you know, side wing girl, you know, like cheering them on to find love. And um, the cool thing about this project too, is that um, like my, my character story is more of a mystery type story. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, Catherine's is more of a Cinderella story. And Ashley is very much like a competition story. And she has sort of two guys that are after her. Mm -hmm. And then Cindy's is sort of the whole snowed in story. So okay. the cool thing is they take these, you know, fun stories and they bring them to light and then we all four get to be in it. It's, it's just such a cool idea. Yeah. So like the big tropes are represented for sure. Um, yes. And can we just talk about the cast really quick? Yes. Because I mean, this is a really amazing, fun lineup. We love Cindy. We um, had Catherine on. She's wonderful too. And then obviously Ashley is great. So the lineup of leading ladies is incredible. Um, and I'm really excited for that. Yeah, no. So I, you know, it's, you never know what people are going to be like, right? When right. you show up in a cast. And I've always been very fortunate. I've always worked with people I really like. Yeah. Um, and I'm not just saying that. Um, but I was a little, like, I, I loved the leading lady aspect, but you don't always know what you're going to get on set, right? These are right. women that have led shows. And um, so when I showed up, they're all so fun. Like, Catherine is so sweet. Oh, She's yeah. Like, She's sweet. Oh my gosh, I remember one day on set, we were sharing a trailer one day just because we had to. And because usually you get your own sort of room to be in, but we were sharing right. one day and she knew that I had two babies and she just like left the trailer and she's like, I'm sure you need your alone time. So she like left the trailer and like, talk. she's so sweet. And Ashley is so funny. I didn't realize that she would be so fun and funny. She's just, just like so fun to chat with and we got along great and we had all these friends in common, but we'd never actually met. 
So that was great to meet her. And then Cindy is also just so awesome and she like knows who she is. So I really admire her because she just, she's done this before and she just fully knows who she is and how she wants things to be. And she just has like the best personality. They're all really so great. I was really shocked, but not shocked because, you know, they're all Hollywood ladies. So of course they're going to be lovely, but uh, they were just the greatest. And we had so much fun working together. And we had a little text chain that Cindy started and we all made jokes on it. It was, it was just such a great, great time. I love, I love it. That. Um, no, the, to see such a strong leading ladies and these are really fan favorites, uh, leading these movies, but then you're all going to be in each other's movies. Um, does, is there a storyline that weaves through all of them too, a little bit? There is. So the interesting, I don't want to give too much away. Um, Lisa, our producer and Carly, uh, producer and writer on she kind of oversaw all four and so did Lisa I don't want to give too much away so they're mad at me but um, the end is the same sort of ending but a different way of an ending does that make sense uh -huh. it's the same night but different things happen within the night that oh night. okay so this is going to be like one these four movies are all happening kind of at the same time same time yeah okay exactly. okay. okay I love that it's really neat. And so, but it was definitely uh, for Lisa and Carly and the director sort of keeping track. Yeah. You shoot these movies, as you know, so fast. I'm sure all the actors have told you that. Yeah. And to put four movies shooting really fast. And then we all had to do our, um, like we're all in each of those movies. So we had to do that in one week. So we had to be like, okay, whose movie are we on? Okay, we're on Catherine's. So this is happening in Catherine's movie. Oh, Ash is this. So like we had to keep track of stuff. So that was sort of difficult, but especially with the timing. That's why it was difficult, but we pulled it off and everyone did a great job and we all had so much fun. And it was in the heat of summer in Ottawa, <laughs> which is very hot, hot like East coast. Um, yeah. so we're all like sweating, wrapping gifts and we have a gift wrapping shop together and um, we're sweating, wrapping our gifts, but pretending we're, you know, so cold and stuff. <laughs> Acting. <laughs> Acting. I'm not. I'm not actually sweating. It's just you know. Sweat. I glow. I glow. <laughs> We're all glowing. Yeah. Oh. Are we all look very glowy. Yeah. <laughs> so when you shot four movies, how long did that take? So I. So each movie is 14, 15 days. Mm -hmm. So I think they started it in April. Um, they started with Cindy's movie. Um, so I think that was April or May. Yeah, April. And then Catherine's movie was May. Mm -hmm. And then my movie was June, July. Okay. And then Ashley's movie was sort of July, August. Okay. And then a week before, um, that's why I love Fireside and Tim Johnson. Um, they were so understanding because I was like, I have I'm traveling with two very small children and my mm -hmm. mom and and so they they put the four overlapping stories. They put it a week before um, my movie started, so I didn't have to do so many trips with my family because right. it's a long travel, yeah, uh, twelve hour travel day, right. Uh, so they were so kind, and um, they're so great with me being a mom again, <laughs> as you guys understand. Yeah. <laughs> um, support. So yeah, we shot it in seven days, like each other's different movies. Okay, and then hold okay. into my yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, you got to think about all those logistics when you're doing these kinds of movies. Yeah, like kudos to production. I could not sure. do that job. What I think people always don't remember, and sometimes I forget the the amount of work it takes to to figure out people's schedules and yeah. timing and locations and right. cast, and it's a lot of work. I like have for crew members they are a huge part why these movies happen and they work so hard i mean they're out there in the snow and the negative weather and the heat yeah. lifting things and you know we as actors you know we've learned our lines but we get the glamorous it's you know glamorous but right not glamorous. but we get that we get to sit back while they set up like they're non-stop we get breaks um and they only get a little lunch break right so i just i always love crew I have so much respect for them and production in general. They're just the best people. And they they are a huge part why these movies are successful. Yeah. I mean, it's so much. It takes so much work just to get started. Um, and we, lo yeah. we love talking to the people that that do that kind of work. It's, it's very interesting. And 
um, learning about the different jobs and the different, honestly, the amount of work it is to, to create these movies, it just helps us appreciate it even more when we're watching on our screens. Oh yeah, and the support, just the yeah. pure support that everyone gives to each other. Um, you know, we're all just so lucky to be able to do this and um, everyone there feels grateful to do it. And um, everyone's just supporting everyone. And, you know, the director supporting the lighting, supporting grip, you know, the director supporting the actors, um, you know, everyone's positivity really sets the tone. And that always starts up, you know, with producers right. and um, when the actors are on set. I That was always one thing that I really admired about when I was sort of you know, not a leading person. I was, if I was on a series, maybe I was more of a side character or, or I was coming in as a co-star. I really just, the series regulars or, you know, the lead of the show, I really, really admired people that really made people feel like happy to be there and admired what they did and respected what they did. That was something that I took with that. I was like, I want to be that one. If, if I get to be number one, I want to make every actor feel you know, like they're really a huge part of the story and they have, they have ideas, like let's figure this out. And I just, I always want to make each actor or crew member feel important or makeup and hair feel important. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I love that. So your movie is Unwrapping Christmas, Tina's Miracle. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, that movie? Yeah, so um, Tina's Miracle is more of a mystery. Um, and, uh, she has to figure out, so she actually runs the whole, uh, which is why I loved the part. She runs the whole gift wrapping shop. So they each have their individual job. So she keeps the, the shop going. Um, it was her senior year thesis that she had this gift wrapping idea and they all came together and created this gift wrapping shop. It's very successful, of course. And, um, <laughs> uh, so she in the story has to plan the, the big night. Um, it's a big competition. The, the town and city all comes together and they raise money for charity. And it's very important to her. Um, and it, you'll find out for reasons why it's so important to her mm -hmm. and to happen. And um, they lose out on a venue and it's the venue they've been doing it for the last 85 years. Mm -hmm. And um you know, she's obviously devastated to find out. So her job is she has to figure out how she's going to have it at this venue. Mm -hmm. um, and lo and behold, she meets a very handsome, of course, charming man <laughs> who has ties to the venue. And he has a daughter. And that's the other reason I loved the story in yeah. itself. Um, he's a daughter and she's dyslexic. And um, that's a story that's very important to me. And I'd never actually seen that in a Hallmark movie or a love story where dyslexic. Mm -hmm you know, that's, that's talked about. So that's talked about as well. Um, a lot with like school funding. It has a lot of really cool elements that meant a lot to me. Um, and then obviously there's a lot of romance in it. And Alec, my uh, co-star, he is lovely and so kind and the sweetest and we got along great. But um, yeah, in the end, she, they have to figure out how to make the gala work. And then the big night happen. And then there's a big wrapping competition that all four ladies take place in. Okay. Okay. So, so that's where you guys come in. A little mystery, a little competition. Mm -hmm. story. Okay. We like a little competition too. Yeah. Like There's a really fun element to it. The mystery is really fun. I liked yeah. the mystery element of it and just sort of going back. You have to look, we have to look at old deeds. Um, and we're actually looking at old deeds, um, you know, plot, plot lines. Like, yeah. very, yeah. it's like very interesting, all the stuff we had to like figure yeah. out and intertwine. And then we learn that he has an attachment to the home, that okay. it's a family attachment with a woman. So you find that all out. It's like a, a a great ancestor. So I loved that element too. It was sort of like 23 and me, or no, 23. What's that show that was on TLC? I used to love watching it. Oh, where, I know what oh, you mean. Yeah. Um, you that find out about the history of your family. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Cool. It's like had an element of that. And I used to love watching that show, funny enough. <laughs> um, what, uh, who you are, or something like that. It had a tree. Yep. Yeah. So it sort of it had an element of that, which I also really liked. Yeah. Um, that's fun. So, what do you have um, like a favorite scene or a little Easter egg? I mean, we know there's a mystery, but what else can we look for when we're watching yours? 
Um, different. Well, I'm trying to think. Well, there's the mystery. There is. Uh, we intertwine cool music into it. The director. Oh. Um, we. It, it's, I'm trying to think what I can give away without giving it away. Um, a cool little element. Or a, fa a favorite location for us to watch for. Favorite scene, favorite outfit, anything we can watch for. Oh, I had, well, I had many favorite outfits. So <laughs> I talked to wardrobe and I said, let's make her like very period. I Because uh -huh. each girl had to be their own thing. Yeah. And Cindy was sort of creative and fun. Ashley was, is a publicist in marketing. So she is, um, my light just went out and my computer you guys, you're gonna laugh at me. This is how disorganized I am. My, my computer's gonna die. Can I go grab my yes, chart? Go grab your computer. Yeah. Okay. You guys talk. Talk about something. I'm gonna go. <laughs> it worked out. Now I can't remember what we were talking about. Oh, uh, outfits. Oh, Where outfits. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, so that that'll be a great place to start. So. I always love coming in with like, oh, like I don't have like, I'm not one of these people that have like, I need to be this. Like I'm very open, but I was like, let's make it because there's a whole historical mm -hmm. element to this, this, this story. Let's make her very sort of period looking in okay. the way she dresses. But obviously I can't look like I'm, you know, in when calls the heart, <laughs> like in the back. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, just some like a little bit more of a 1940s sort of vibe about her. Love uh, it. So that was sort of my, what I sort of envisioned of her. And then Cindy's character is very artsy. So she has really cute, like red streaks in her hair. And she, she has like Christmas, like ornaments all over herself. And um, Catherine was very sort of, uh, she had like a lot of plaids and sort mm -hmm. of, um, Anyways, everyone, you know, and Ashley was very glamorous. Like we each had our own sort of style, which I loved. Um, so that that was really fun to sort of play around with. I love that 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 side of the beginning side is finding the character and sort of how she dresses and how she walks. Because I feel like it kind of it tells so much the way someone dresses or carries himself or does their hair every morning, right. or the jewelry they pick. Um, right. I always also try and find like some sort of jewelry piece, like that means something to me mm -hmm. um, when I have a character. And even though no one else knows, like they might be like, oh, these um, just wear this, you know, this bracelet in this scene. And then I will ask to wear the bracelet in every scene. So I'll make a story up to why she loves wearing the bracelet. But actually in this story, they each all have a bracelet, um, which was their, um, their, they lived in a house together at university. So it's the address of their university. So the other beautiful thing about the story is they all went to university together and they became these friends. So they have like a long history, which I also really love. So that was the thing we worked at worked on on set was each character, like me finding my own personal relationship with Cindy and what that looked like, you know, because we all right. have our own friends and our own relationships with them. Um so that was really just like so much fun. We didn't have a lot of time, but we just got close fast. And yeah. I remember one night me and Cindy had a scene from my movie and um, we we were both just talking and in the scene and she's telling me to be open to the idea of love. And, you know, I just, I just like, I want to cry right now, but I just started crying when she said that. Cause um, you know, just like, it just made me think, you know, having a friend that's so supportive and, we're so we're so lucky to have friendships like that. And um, me, I just loved that scene with her. I had just so many special. And then Ashley and I had a bunch of very sort of like silly scenes together. Yeah. Um, so that was a lot of fun to play. So I, it was just like such a great experience, especially after time off. It was so great coming back to a group of women that were so supportive and lovely. Yeah, what a project to come back to. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Did you know this project was going to go to the new streaming service, Hallmark Plus? I did. Yeah, I, I, um, I did. I, my, when I got it, that was sort of the plan, I think, unless right. I've created that I did. Maybe I. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, streaming is such a big part of the way people watch things now and just grows every, every day. It's bigger piece of the, the market. And so it's fun to see this great company content coming out to the streaming service yeah and you can watch it at your own timing you know that's mm -hmm. the great 
about it. You can be like, I kind of feel like watching, you know, Cindy, you know, on a, on a vineyard, I'm going to watch her movie or, you know, like it's, <laughs> it's such a great concept. So, um, yeah, I, I think, I think I did know, I think they, my manager told me and I thought it was, that sounded fun. <laughs> yeah. We um, tend to so watch things, oh, I was going to say, we tend to watch things in groups. So we'll watch, we'll probably just watch all of them. Yeah. Right? In a row. Yeah. I think yeah. mine comes out first. Yeah. And then it goes, eight, it looks like, you know, more than I do. Yeah. <laughs> I think I thought it was, yeah, November 8th. Yeah, I knew it was the first one, like November 7th or 8th. I can't remember. But yeah, November 8th. I should know that. Thank you so much, Sarah. And then we have Catherine's next, I think November 14th or something. 16th? We don't have it listed. I would bet for 15th. But I think so. I, I yeah. bet every seven days it'll every, come out. Every Thursday. Yep. And yep. probably they don't. Days with like an appointment for my child and saying, that's the day for the Hallmark movie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, then it's Ashley's movie okay. and then it's Cindy's movie. Okay. Yeah. Very fun. Now you are no stranger to these, you know, Christmas movies, um, TV Christmas movies, but what is it that you love about making them? That's such a great question. I always think about this actually, because, um, I started out doing theater and then I moved into soap operas mm -hmm. and then, uh, while I was doing a soap, um, my, my very first audition was for, uh, it was like based off the love when calls the heart, they were doing these series of books, like when call one. Yeah. What, like love comes softly. Yep. Yeah. So I, I think it was Catherine Heigl, like they, she did one and then I was supposed to be her daughter telling the story of saving Christmas. Um, and it was, I think I was 20 yeah. and I, I had gotten the audition sides and it said that she had a child and I was like, well, I can't have a child. I'm only 20. <laughs> um, but I went in for the audition and then I got a call that day and this is when they filmed a lot in California. Um, so I got to film on the little house on the prairie um, lot, which was yeah. so cool. And I got to ride horses. But what I've always loved about Hallmark movies is that they always make women very strong. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was such a beautiful experience because I was always sort of playing like the mean girl. Or if I was on a CW series, mm -hmm. I was, you know, the girl in high school that was mean or... Mm -hmm. uh, and I just loved that they made these really interesting, fully developed women um, who had successful careers or were trying to figure out their careers. Um, and Hallmark has always actually, before it was ever, you know, a thing, they always really supported women and um, their female leads. And I always really admired that about that them. And this was way back in the day when I was younger and, um, they were just so great. And so I, after I did a few movies for them, I, I think I took six, seven years off and I was doing other stuff. And I just filmed, I filmed a bunch of really serious stuff. And I filmed this movie, Only the Brave, um, which was a really big movie. And it was a very sad story and a real story. And I'd done all these sort of projects that ugh, just, you know, they were, I, I just wanted to go into something where I felt like, it was like a happy, really positive, mm -hmm. fun experience. And so I went back and did a winter princess and I was just, I just loved it. I just had so much fun and to get to film something in 14 days where you have to be on your toes um, and something sweet and fun, fun and makes people feel good. Um, right. That's the thing is that when, every time I talk to people like, Oh, you're mm -hmm. an actor. What do you do? And, and I say, yeah, I, I do Hallmark movies. Oh, I love Hallmark movies. Or like, oh, yeah. me, we watch Hallmark movies every Christmas together. Or And my husband's a former Marine officer. And just a lot of them, their families, like a lot of people in the military watch Hallmark movies. And it makes them feel so good. Or if yeah. their husband or father is away, it, they right. just, it means so much to them to sort of let loose and stop and not think about anything, all the things in the world and just come and sit and watch a feel good movie. I always say Hallmark is like candy <laughs> and I love watching them. I think they're so fun. So that's the big reason why I love doing it is that 
it's fun. It feels good. And it makes people feel good and have fun. I, I love that you came back to play a princess besides. Yes. It was a, was a princess <laughs> Carlotti or something like that. Yeah. Me? Wasn't it Princess Carlotti or something yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> was, uh, she was British. I wasn't, they wouldn't let me do a British accent because they were like, we don't want her, you know, we want people feeling like they can relate to her. So I, they made a story that I'd gone to school in the States, but Princess Carlotta. And then I had a crack. I worked with um, Chris McNally, who yeah, is that's so right. great. I love him. He's yeah. the best. He just got a lot. Our moms do Zumba together, which is very funny. Which we oh, just that's got so cute. <laughs> working together. He was, I was like, you know, my mom, I was just on the phone with my mom. She's Zumba. He's like, well, my mom goes to Zumba. And we we grew up like 10 minutes away from each other. So we discovered that our moms do Zumba together. <laughs> oh, hilarious. Uh, we, Chris has been on the podcast before. Yeah. He was great. Yeah. Oh, he's the best. He's so, he's so lovely. And he's just, he's just like one of a kind. I, I think he's so great. Um. Does it, doesn't everybody want to play a princess in a Hallmark I know, movie, right? though? <laughs> I know. I was like, when I had got the script, I was like, oh, I, I get to wear a crown? Like, yeah. I have to do this. <laughs> this is so fun. You got a ball gown. You got... <laughs> exactly. Um, right? Isn't that isn't that fun? Don't um, we all like princesses at the end of the day? <laughs> right? Um, I, love, I love that your reason for that you love to make these movies is, is the same reason that everybody is watching them so it's like such a nice fit because one thing we've learned um we've met a lot of different people at fan events and and everybody has a story and mm -hmm. it's just like you said like oh i watched it with my grandmother or i watch it um what for while we were going through this hard time or so everybody has it feels like all these viewers have a connection to these movies mm -hmm. A personal connection and i just love that you are also feeling that too so it's well okay. funny story actually chris mcnally i there was this woman who was a doctor during covid and she was working in the icu and working with a lot of patients and my friend knew of her and he said you know she really loves chris mcnally and i said i'm gonna do something for her so i got chris mcnally to make a video for her and sent it to her and she like cried <laughs> But he created her support. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's that, exactly. That's why you do these movies. It's to make people feel good um, because there's just, you know, as we all know, there's all people have life and things going on in the world and their personal lives. And yeah. just to be able to sit and watch something that makes you feel good. Um, there's nothing like it. And I for me, that as an actor, like that's the greatest gift that you can make somebody feel good. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Now, as as a uh, busy mom, how are you able to juggle this? How are you able to um, juggle the movies that you're making and your busy mom life? I love that you asked that. <laughs> um, a lot of support. Um, I'm sure people, they listen to this or you guys understand being a mom or a parent. It's so hard to juggle, juggle it all. And I had no idea how challenging it is to mm -hmm. be all things yeah. and um you know whether it's a stay-at-home mom whether it's a working mom a single parent it's it's the most challenging thing uh, but it's also the greatest gift and there's nothing like it uh, but just having the support um i you know my mom lives in canada and she is so great um she travels with me um, she gets tired because she has to help a just three-year-old and just one-year-old, but she travels with me. And again, um, the company Fireside and Tim Johnson Productions, they're the most supportive. Um, they, they are the best. And why I keep loving working with them is because I know that they will always make sure. I don't care about me. <laughs> I just care about my family, that they're mm -hmm. safe and happy and good. Um, and if they're not, then I just don't feel like I can make the movie happen, but just a lot mm -hmm. of support from you guys. I'm sure just, just being here today, you both are mom, uh, moms mm -hmm. of three and you work and, and it takes a lot of juggling. Like Sarah, you said your kids are upstairs right now. <laughs> they are. <laughs> it's it's uh, always a juggle. It's, you know, support. I think that's the, the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, Cause I, 
do you, you don't work the most traditional hours either when you're filming, you need different support as someone who's worked outside of traditional work times. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's a big piece of it. It is. And you, Julie, you said you work in a hospital, so mm -hmm. your hours must be a lot too. And um, different timing and being mm -hmm. there at night. And it's just, it's a lot to juggle. Um, so I bow down, commend, admire all parents who, who Same. work, work and have kids. And again, it's such a gift. We all choose to be parents, but um, it is, it's a, a lot of work and you need a, a lot of support and um, you just have to be okay with not sleeping. <laughs> yeah. I've been there, done that. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's the answer. <laughs> Sometimes it is though, and um, that's hard too. You know, like sometimes the answer is you don't sleep a lot, so mm -hmm. um, you make it you make it work sometimes. Yeah, you uh, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you always want to be an actor, or that just kind of like roll out and happen? So you guys are asking really great questions, by the way. <laughs> um, I really like your questions. Um, I when I was I'd always sang and dance, and when I was eighteen years old. I moved to New York City, not knowing anyone in this country. <laughs> and I had a very small little place in New York and it had cement floors and it had mice and you name it. Everything you think about in a New York apartment. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I started going in on open calls, lining up at four in the morning. I didn't really have an agent. Um, I, someone heard me sing and signed me and I ended up after a little bit of time in New York, uh, booking, um, wicked, which then led to me booking a chorus line. So I started out in musicals and I loved singing and dancing so much. That's what I'd always done. And I danced since I was three and, um, people came to a chorus line that were in the film and TV industry and we're like, have you ever thought about, you know, doing film and TV? And I was like, no, no, no. I just want to sing and dance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, then one day I was talking to an actor who was a Broadway actor and he was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing a soap opera in the in um, the day. And I and I uh, do a Broadway show at night. I was like, that's really cool. I want to do that. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, I know. And so I sort of switched paths. One day I was in a dancing in a Broadway audition. And I thought, I'm not going to be able to kick my leg forever. Right. Like I was like 22 at the time, but I was like, I'm not gonna be able to do this forever. I got to figure this out. So I decided to switch into film and TV. I went into a, I signed up for a class with a uh, casting director for a soap opera. And he said to me, how come I've never met you before? And I said, well, I don't audition. And then I don't audition for film and TV. So he set me up with a manager. And then she started setting me up on auditions and then I booked all my children. So that sort of led me in the path. Long story. I told you guys I would ramble. No, they no keep, going. Going. keep going. This is the best. <laughs> Long story short, I then transitioned into film and TV. And so I always wanted to be a musical theater Broadway actor. Yeah. I did not want to be film and TV. was not interested in all at yeah. all. Um, and when I first started on all my children, I did not know what I was doing at all. Um, I remember my first day on set, um, I was with Melissa Claire Egan, who is like a mm -hmm. proper queen. Uh, and I, I'm. <laughs> yes, I love her. And I, she was just like dialed in and they brought me on as this new character ch to challenge her. And I was like, this woman's amazing. <laughs> like, I, was like, so I need to take acting lessons to figure out how I'm going to be on set with this lady every day. Yeah. Um, and so that's how I transitioned into film and TV. So I didn't always want to be an actor. I wanted to be, I wanted to do musicals and continue mm. on that path. But I just knew that it was going to be doing Broadway. I have friends that still do it and they're amazing. They're the most talented people, the most disciplined. But for me, I just knew that I had this itch to do something else. And I just knew that. I mean, look, I have friends that are 40 and on Broadway and still kicking their leg. Yeah. I just like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. So <laughs> um, that's how I transitioned. So I, in long story short, I always wanted to be an actor, but it was a Broadway actor. Right. But I, 
I now love film and TV. I love it so much. I love, I love getting to tell these stories and you get to travel to different places and I get to bring my kids on different experiences and my mom, thank you mother <laughs> for helping me. Um, but I love, I love doing it. So I feel, and I feel very grateful that I get to still do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think what the journey is wonderful though. Yeah. Like, how you get there? I think you know a lot of people do do theater. I, you're you're not alone. I we know lots just even in the Hallmark world that have yeah. done theater uh, as they they came out of things. So were you like high school theater the whole shebang? So I never did high school theater. What I oh. always loved is so in Canada it's a bit there is high school theater, but I never did it in high school. I always did dancing outside okay of school and singing outside of school, and then I competed. Um, because I had a dance teacher, Mrs. Vanek, um, she told me that I need to become good at all three things in order to mm. be a new theater actor. Yeah. So I just really focused on all three things. I did a, I, I did sort of, it was called, um, it was like a goddess sing, got a dance by Perry Ehrlich. I did this sort of musical theater mm -hmm. element and I did dancing 30 hours a week. Yeah. And I did singing about 15 hours a week. Thank you, mom and dad, for driving me to all those activities. <laughs> um, so after school. So yeah. I just focused on all three. And that's how I did it. But I'd never done like a full musical. Like my actual first full musical was Wicked and a Chorus Line. That's crazy. <laughs> completely nuts. <laughs> it's completely yeah. nuts. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, on Broadway really first one <laughs> no big deal but I was very like I was very naive like I kind of wish I had some experience doing full musicals before because I was very naive about it all um and just sort of just naive but you know what I also think being a little bit naive is it did help me book those productions yeah. Yeah. You don't understand where you're at sometimes. I have no idea. You know, you're on these on a stage with, um, you know, Megan Hilty, who's like a Broadway star. And you're just like, okay. like, I knew she was a Broadway star, but what? I'm like, Megan Hilty. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh. Uh, that's that, amazing. That's a fantastic story, man. We like, both have theater kids, so we're yeah. we love this story. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I hope I hope one of my boys likes theater. We'll find out, but I hope I hope one of them likes it. We'll see. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's uh, fun. super fun. Um, no, but it, that story is is an amazing story, and you know, like your the soap opera connection too. We see a lot of that in these movies. Uh, people coming out of theater. I I just think that it's the journey that um, most people don't just go like to. I'm here, like right. This path. Oh yeah. no. And it's such, it's such a long journey and it's all, always the, the thing that I think I'm going to do. I don't end up doing, I end up doing something else that was completely not sort of in my mind or what I was set on doing. So I, I now older looking back, I, you know, I'm, it's just, I just, you know, it's just so interesting how life works out, you know, yeah. for you and how you realize that it was all meant to be in right. the end you know like when if I, if I didn't get a job back in the day I was so upset and this goes for anything in life if you don't book something or get something or get that job or if your kids are in theater school and they don't get that part it, it in the end it leads you to where you're supposed to go and and it doesn't really matter in the end because you know where you're meant to go is where you're meant to go and yeah. i i love being in this world being in the hallmark world i feel very fortunate um that i get to do it and i get to be an actor still call right. myself an actor <laughs> that's uh oh, okay. it's a great story i love yeah. i love the journey and you started young and um green and very it, good. It's <laughs> some people are like, I was a kid actor. I did stuff when I was a kid. And some are like, I didn't do anything. I know. It is really interesting. Um, like just all the actors that I've worked with, um, like Michael Rady, I think he started acting when he was younger. Um, Corey Sevier, he started very young. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was a kid actor. He was a kid actor. He's so yeah. experienced. I love him as well. Yeah, we, we do too. We, we work with. Um, but yeah, people all start, you know, at different times and it's interesting. You all kind of end up in the same place. Too. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah, it is interesting. I mean, we've had the, I was training to be a professional soccer player. And <laughs> oh my gosh. 
Alec, who I'm, I was working with, who's in this movie, actually yeah. he has two Christmas movies. He's actually a science teacher. I love that. Oh, okay, that that's cool. fine. So I was talking to him one day and, and he was like, oh yeah, I got you know time off. I'm a substitute teacher for science for high school. I said, excuse me? <laughs> I was like, science? And he said, yeah. I'm kind of like, I've always wanted to be an actor, but I went to UBC, which is a great university in Canada for um, science. Uh -huh. And he's, you know, now here I am. I'm like, wow, that's that's incredible. So he's a substitute science teacher slash leading guy. Uh, no yeah. kidding. I'm, I was like, like I'm Mark Hong. Hong. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> His exactly. students just love it. <laughs> yeah. It's so interesting when you work with other actors, you find you're with each other for these intense 15 days, but you find out so much about their lives. And that's the other thing I love about these movies is they're quick, fast, and intense. But you really, your scene partner becomes so important to you in those 15 right. days. And yeah. you learn so much about each other. And you try and solve scenes together. And even and the director, too, like, you just, it becomes this really close, intense relationship. But I just, I love learning about people's lives and what brought them to where they are and um, you know, some of them have families and hearing about their families and FaceTiming with their kids. It's, it's really yeah. such a great experience. I, I love it. Sounds fun. We hear a lot that it's um, that it's like summer camp. It is. It really is an intense summer camp. Right. <laughs> a really hard one. But yeah. A working summer camp. <laughs> Thank goodness we don't have bunk beds, though. Like, I don't think I do bunk beds. My Nobody wants bunk beds. <laughs> oh, well, I'd be like, oh. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, Natalie, would you play a favorites game with us as we wrap up? Yeah. Okay. What's your favorite rom-com? What's my favorite rom-com? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Hallmark or just rom-com? Hey. Any rom-com. Oh, geez. I'm trying to think. You can you say can more, than more than one. Yeah. I'm just trying to, you know, I love Goldie Hawn. Yeah. So any sort of rom-com that she does. Mm -hmm. I just think she's so brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I love watching her movies because you just love her and she's so funny. But then she has so much heart. I feel like she would be like the queen of Hallmark if she was <laughs> in the land. Um, so any movie with her. So I'm kind of taking, I'm kind of just. Saying yeah. that. What about you yeah. guys? I like what, what are your favorite rom-coms? Uh, I'm going to always default all the way back to you've got mail. Oh my gosh. You're right. You got mail's great. Yeah. No I, it's really hard to pick, but I'm just going to say like a, you got mail or when Harry met Sally. One of those uh, yeah. Yes. You, know, you got to go back to the classics. So good. I mean, rom-coms are founded on a, on a great foundation of some outstanding rom-coms. So I know, and they make you laugh and and cry. They're, you know, like yeah. <laughs> yep, exactly. That crazy. I can't think of that one Goldie Hawn movie that I really like. Oh, is it shipwrecked or something? Overboard. Overboard. Yes. I know. She's so, her. her <laughs> oh, she's so great. I just when I think of rom coms, I just think of her. I don't yeah. know why. Yeah. Uh, there's obviously so many actresses and actors that are brilliant in rom coms. We love them. Do you have a favorite TV series or some something you're binging right now? Um, I uh, binging. Um, what did I just? Oh, um, you know the. Uh, gosh, I can't think of the name. You know, they, they go to different. Uh, Jennifer Coolidge is in them, um, and uh, they people are going to be like Natalie. Um, <laughs> they there was two series. It's on HBO. And um, I always hang on, hold please. Jennifer, yeah, Cullen, yeah, no, figure it out. This is what everybody loves, right? Um, uh, brain, Jennifer Coolidge, and people, if they're watching this, like, come on, think of the show. Um, White Lotus, oh, right, oh, yeah, I love White Lotus, I think it's brilliant. Love that. <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's, he's mad I didn't think of the right show. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I need to read something else. Yeah. <laughs> White Lotus. That, no, that I have not seen that. So we'll we'll add that. Yeah, we get the best good. list out of these questions, let me tell you. It's so it's such a great show. I mean, it's not for everyone, but right. I think it's brilliant. Love it. Yeah, I'm still I'm behind. I'm in the in still watching the Theo James 
season. Is that the last season? Um, I think it was the second one. Yeah, I think it's this, yeah. they, they just filmed the third season, I think in Thailand. So I'm excited to see that. Um, okay, what about a favorite hobby or pastime? Favorite hobby or pastime? Um, uh, I think, you know, dancing. Yeah. I think um, getting to be able to dance. But I, I can't move like I used to. <laughs> um, Is there? Do you have a particular kind of dance that you enjoy, or just in no, general? No, I, I grew up doing all kinds. Yeah. So yeah. I just love dancing. And I, before having kids, as you guys, I'm sure you had passions and loves and hobbies. Um, you know, when you have very small children, you don't always get the time to, you know, do anything. Do anything. <laughs> Be creative for yourself. So yeah. Uh, do you guys have hobbies, hobbies you kind of miss doing? Um, this is my hobby now. I love that. <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah, this yeah. is our hobby. I've always um, baked uh, the under science teacher. The science of cooking is baking. And so that's always been really my kind of default thing. I, I like to bake and give it away, honestly. I, I know, because then you probably just sit and I know when I cook, I just spend the night eating it. So I have to you know, not bake so much. <laughs> right, right. When you have teenagers, though, you can bake and then you don't even get anything because then it's <laughs> and that's to look forward to. <laughs> just all gone. You're like, wait, where did that go? <laughs> it only lasts like a minute. <laughs> yeah. Not, honestly. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite? I'm just gonna ask this because you got a background. Favorite musical. Um, I wish I could go back and do a chorus line oh. because, because when I did it, I was like 20 mm -hmm. and I was again, so young and so naive, but I, didn't I, know. I just didn't know. And I was playing. You didn't know you were in a chorus line. Like you knew you were like, in a chorus I line, but you yeah. Yeah. I didn't know. And I, I didn't, I was one of, so in the story, she's one of she's 26 but she's one of the older ones on the line of dancers right and i was one of the younger ones and so playing an older character at the mm -hmm. time not even that older but um i wish i had that experience of what it's like to be uh have life experience as a performer and artist i think i would have played that role so much differently mm has to have the fun with her which right. is I think, why they cast me because i didn't carry any sort of weight in me yeah. that character doesn't have any sort of weight as a person but i wish i could go back and play that role again because i think i'd play it differently but still have her fun elements that's always been a dream of mine to go back and play that role so and it also is one of my favorite musicals because it is the journey and and story of being an actor and being a dancer mm -hmm. um and what we were talking about, how you have these life experiences that lead you to where you are. It's a great, great, great musical. And it has so much history. Right. Um, and I it was just a really cool experience. I met my best friends doing that show, too. Oh, love that. So, love that. Yeah. And it's just oh. still so iconic. Like, just oh. never loses its yeah. spot. Right? Yeah. Do you guys have favorite musicals? Sarah, do your kids have favorite musicals? <laughs> Oh gosh! Well, right now my daughter's really into um, Beetlejuice and Adam's Family because they're performing at school. Adam's Family, so she's into oh, that fun. one. Very fun. Hamilton is still the big favorite here, though. We were just listening it in the car to the soundtrack. So such a great um, show, kids. Yeah, yeah. Any anything anything my son has been in, <laughs> honestly. Um, but also waitress. I will throw waitress music on at any given time too. So. I love that story. That's just, I, I saw it on um, Broadway. I saw both shows on Broadway when I was living in New York and just those performances, ugh, they were the yeah. like yeah. Just, Hamilton. Actually, I won, they have this uh, TKTS, I think that's what it's called in New York. I was just okay. telling you about it and you sign up for it and you can win the lottery to go. Yeah. So we want me and my husband won the lottery to go see Hamilton. We were front row center. No way. 
<laughs> and our tickets were ten dollars. And this was at the time they were like, you know, two thousand. Yep. Like, could not afford that. That's crazy. Um, and I was just like, it was wild. I felt like I was, <laughs> I was in Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> like you're in you the basically area. were. Yes. <laughs> I, like I was one of the founding fathers up there with them. <laughs> Excuse me while I rap a little. <laughs> I can't rap like they rap, so I could be in it. <laughs> oh. That's good. Uh, what about music in general? Do you have a what's what kind of music do you throw on when you just need to be in a good mood? Um, well, speaking of waitress, Sarah Bareilles, yeah. I love her. Um, I like Billie Eilish. I, I kind of, I know she's a little, she's more Gen Z, but I yeah. like her music. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love old seventies music. I turn on old seventies music a lot. Um, and I, I love, I just, I like all music actually. I know that I love jazz music. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love classical music. Um, I love Disney music actually. Yeah. I Same. actually I love all music. I I the only music I don't love is heavy metal. Like that. Rah, yeah. Right. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Like, um, but yeah. What about you guys? What are your what are your go-tos? I we also both love a lot of music. We run a fair amount of social media and pick a wide variety of yeah. music. Oh, I mean cool. I, will I mean, like, if I'm working out, I want like '90s rap. Yeah, <laughs> I will probably default to to '80s a fair, a fair amount, but really a wide variety. Same, yeah. same uh, like a musical theater goes on as much. Uh, I've got uh, like my Judy Garland. Uh, oh yeah, covers over here. So I like I like my '40s jazz and show tunes and yeah. Yeah, that's good. You like a variety. That's that's yeah. I, I'm the same. <laughs> Very all the classical stuff too even comes through, and uh, uh, we all did met music, and our kids all did music as part of growing up, and so we uh, all of it, honestly. And and you know, speaking of music, I always feel like Hallmark um, has you know such there's such um, music is so important in the movies too, right? Um, and uh, Max McGuire, I know you guys have spoken to. I have a very close relationship with him. Um, working, obviously, working relationship. We're buddies yeah. too. But, yeah. um, but we, he's so great about like when I I have input on things. Like I'll be like, we need to make sure there's this music. We, we need we need the music to feel like this. And he's like, okay, Natalie, like, chill. <laughs> uh, that was actually the thing about um, Noel next door with Corey. Yeah. Um, there wasn't. I don't know if you guys remember that movie, but he has yeah. a stroke. And he was supposed to be like a computer tech guy. Yeah. I said to Max, why? I said, why don't we make him like he's something to do with music? Like he was a conductor or something. Right. And he was like, yeah, that's cool. So that he, it, when he loses his, that ability to do it, it's just, it really takes him down a road. Yeah. And then why don't we intertwine beautiful classical music into it? Yeah. Um, and he put Claire de Lune in it, which yeah. I love song and um so i always just speaking of music i always find that music really and with characters you you can learn so much and you can feel so much through music and movies so um just bringing it back to music i i just i love talking music and um max is always so collaborative when it comes to that stuff i yeah. love that and i love that you mentioned earlier bringing it back to unwrapping christmas um you mentioned something about the music and how there's great music in it. So I'm actually ex excited for that because we don't always get good music in these movies. Um, there's a I little love, bit. Yeah. <laughs> like there's not a huge, huge mm -hmm. musical. Um, yep. I'm actually like creating something with some people that we're trying to bring a really cool musical element. We'll mm -hmm. see where it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, just with that movie was with Max and I was like, can we just throw in some cool jazz music yeah. sort of to create sort of the feeling of her mm -hmm. and the history of her and what her home feels like through music um, with the jazz. And so we, Max is like, I'm going to get an old record player. So we had an old record player. It's not, you know, you can only do so much with these movies, but I just always, and Max is great about it too. And Lisa, the producer, just sort of letting us be creative in other ways um, with the movie. So I, I, you know, it'd be fun to have a really big sort of musical element, which I know they've done with Hallmark. I know they've hired a lot of great Broadway people and musicians in the past. Mm -hmm. And I know those movies always do really, really well. People love it. Yeah. yeah. We love that. So do you have a, you said Sarah Bareilles is one of your favorite people. Do you have a favorite Sarah Bareilles song? Um, you know, the, her album, uh, 
uh, kaleidoscope. Was it called kaleidoscope? Okay. Um, it was. So I, 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 me- I, so I, I had booked all my children and we had, they moved us to LA and I was devastated because all my friends were in New York. Right. And I, every morning driving to work, I would put on her album. Um, I think the song, you know, I want to be brave. Yeah. That- brave. Mm-hmm. Just listening to her whole album and drive to work that morning when there's nobody on the roads in LA, which never mm-hmm. happens. Right. right. And I just, I just, just remember that album just sort of, because I felt very, you know, moving from New York to LA and not knowing anyone. And I had left all my friends and I was in this new place and, you know, LA didn't feel like home to me. Um, just loved turning on her music and driving and just sort of listening to her music and just feeling brave working opposite Melissa Claire Egan. <laughs> right? So yeah. what you want to say, let the words fall yeah. out. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We may right. have used that song in some of our social media a fair amount. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, well, this has been so much fun, Natalie. Can you tell everybody where they can follow you on social media? Um, I am on on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> um, on the Natalie underscore Hall. But I'm sure if you just search the Natalie Hall or Natalie Hall, I think you can find it. Um, and then I am on Twitter. Uh, I think I'm the Natalie Hall there. Um, as you can tell, I'm not the best about all those worlds. <laughs> the social media world. Yeah, like I, I love social media. Like because mm-hmm. you learn so much and you keep in contact with people. That's how we got connected. Right. Um, yeah. um, but I'm just not always the greatest about it. Um, but that's how you can find me. And I'm, you know, usually always if I'm doing something, it's my favorite thing to do is to look at people's photos. <laughs> I'm doing as we all do. <laughs> Love um, okay. And also before we wrap up, tell everybody um, when and where they can watch your movie. So you can watch Tina's story or all the girls story unwrapping Christmas on Hallmark plus in the month of November, starting November 8th. Cause Sarah mm-hmm. kindly told me November 8th. It's November 8th. We will be there. Thank you guys. You guys were so awesome. to talk. I, I truly did love our conversation and just bringing me back. And I, I love the questions you asked. They were really great. It was fun to think about. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank we you. love having you on. Yes. And thank yes. you everybody for watching. Um, we will see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.